If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and go to training.mammothinteractive.com where we have tons of more videos just like this. In this lecture, we are going to get started with keeping track of levels in our user interface. Our first step is going to be to build a text mesh pro user interface object. Back in my game, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy and create a new UI object, specifically of the type text, text mesh pro. This is going to add a new object to the game. You may get this suggestion to import TMP essentials. The first time you access Text Mesh Pro in a game, you'll have to add resources to the project that are essential for Text Mesh Pro. So you want to click Import TMP Essentials. Great, now we can go back to our project. Once the import is complete, you'll get a message in the console that says TMP Essential Resources have been imported. So we have new objects in our hierarchy. We have a canvas object and inside of it a text child object. In your game you'll see a bit of text appear in the bottom left hand corner of your actual game. So the canvas object is the container for your text. You can set the position and the rotation of your canvas. You can set properties of the canvas itself the canvas scaler and the graphic raycaster. Properties about the container. Into this canvas you can put text for different elements like the player's score, the player's health, chat, and more. We have one child object, the text TMP object. This contains a piece of text that says new text. So we can transform the position of our text object, the canvas renderer, it also has a text mesh pro text UI component, which we will use later on in our section, which allows us to actually change properties about the text, like the text itself, the visuals of the text, the font size, the font family, the color, and we can set extra settings as well. Let's change the name of this text object to score. We can also move this text object by clicking and dragging the X position or just setting the value manually. And same thing with the Y position. The Z position doesn't matter as much because we don't have multiple elements. So you can just leave that at zero. But we can adjust the X and Y position as we see fit. We can also increase the font size of our text. If you increase the font size and you find that the text now goes onto a new line, that means you have to increase the width of your text so that it can all fit on one line. All right, so feel free to adjust until you have your text in a location that you like. We're going to change the text from new text to say score instead. If you play the game, you'll be able to see that score will remain in a fixed position on the screen like an overlay because it's a user interface object. So it's not considered part of the game, it's considered an overlay. All right, there we have our score text object and you can adjust properties of it if you'd like as you see fit. Coming up next, now that we have our score object, we're going to build a custom event to set the text of this score object. So we will add a script to this score and that script is going to set the text to be the actual player's score, where the score is how many levels they have successfully completed in the game. So join me in the next lecture to build a custom event for setting text. In this lecture, we are continuing our section on keeping track of levels in a user interface. We're going to build a custom event to set the text in our user interface, the text being the score of the player. How many levels have they completed successfully so far? So we have to build a custom event. And for that, we can build a new graph on our new object, the score object. So I'm going to add a new component here, a script machine which we have to create if we want to store a graph. Then I'm going to create a new graph in the script machine. I will call the graph score. Let's hit save or enter and that will create the graph. Then we're going to edit the graph by clicking edit graph. 
we can open this script graph and we see we have two default events on start and on update. We can delete on update because we're going to work with on start later and we'll also build a custom event argument. So let's right click anywhere in the graph and add a new node. This node will be a custom event. So search for custom event. We're creating a new event that we want to listen for. The event is going to be called update score text because we're going to be updating the text in the user interface. So this is creating our own event and we just gave it a name called update score text. So what should this event do? Well, it should set the text of our text mesh pro. So I'm going to drag a new pin and I'm going to search for text mesh pro. But you might notice if you search up text mesh pro, you don't get any options. You could search up set text and you'll get a message or an option for text mesh, but this is actually misleading. We cannot actually use set text of text mesh. You'll get a yellow bar above the node, which tells you that there's a problem with the node. And if you click on the node in the inspector, you can see that the warning is that the target is missing a text mesh component. That's because our object, this, the score, it's not a text mesh, it's a text mesh pro U GUI. So if you delete this, you can go back to your hierarchy and you can click on the score and you can see that the score object has a component called text mesh pro text UI, which means it is a text mesh pro U GUI. It's not a text mesh and it's not a text mesh pro. So we have to be careful here. But why didn't Text Mesh Pro show up in our options? If I, I try to add a node under Text Mesh Pro and specifically UGUI, I don't see any options for that. The reason being that we actually have to enable Text Mesh Pro because it's not one of the more common types. Like if I right click, you can see options for control, events, graphs, logic, math, nesting, time, variables. These are the most common types. But for some types that are uncommon or newer, you have to enable them in project settings. So Text Mesh Pro UGUI is popular, but because it's newer than Text Mesh, and which is a legacy type, for that reason, we have to enable Text Mesh Pro and Text Mesh Pro UGUI. So I'm going to close my script graph for now, and I'm going to open my project settings. This is at the top of your Unity options in that menu. Go to edit and select project settings or just search for project settings in the help bar. So this will pop open Unity's project settings. Go to the visual scripting option under project settings. We're going to adjust the settings for visual scripting. Here we have options for generating nodes. These are the nodes available to us in our graph. We have type options and a node library. We also have custom inspector properties, which we can add as well. So we're interested in the type options and the node library. Let's start with type options. You can see all of the type options available for us. There's quite a few because these are the most common type options, but what if we want to use a newer type option or a less popular type option? Well, we can click the plus button at the very bottom of the list to add a new type. We're going to search for Text Mesh Pro. And if you don't see it up here, try searching it up here as Text Mesh. All right, so you might not see it appear here in this list. So first we have to actually import the node library. So before you can add the type, you have to add the node library. So expand the node library and you'll see a whole list of libraries which are the creators behind the node. Here click plus to add a new node library and search for Text Mesh Pro. You get these two options, Text Mesh Pro and Text Mesh Pro Editor. You want to add both of these as node libraries. So let's search for Text Mesh Pro and Text Mesh Pro Editor. Great, so now we have these two added to our available list. What if we try to now add Text Mesh Pro to our list of types? Well, now it is available. So we have Text Mesh Pro available and Text Mesh 
pro UGUI. The UGUI is what we are interested in because that is our component type, but we can also add text mesh pro, the regular type as well, but that's not required, although you may commonly use this one, but really it's the UGUI that we're interested in. So just keep the UGUI. Then we are going to scroll down and select regenerate nodes, which is going to update what is available for us to create in our script graphs. This time we'll actually be able to create nodes of the text mesh pro UGUI type. You'll get a message that regenerate nodes completed. You can press OK and then close your project settings. Then let's go back to our score graph. Now, this time, if I try to create a node under the text mesh pro type, well, we imported the text mesh pro UGUI type, which is our component type because we have a text mesh pro UI type, which means it's text mesh pro UGUI. It's not text mesh pro, which can be confusing. So just pay attention to that. So we're going to select text mesh pro UGUI, but we want to specifically set text. So I'm going to search for text mesh pro set text, or you can just search for UGUI set text for short. And we want to scroll down and just select the regular set text without any extra arguments, just the text mesh pro UGUI set text. This requires two different arguments, two inputs. First, this referring to the text mesh pro UGUI component. We can just use this, which refers to the object, the score object, as long as it has a text mesh pro UI component, then we can automatically access that component via this. We don't have to grab the object and then get the component. We can just use this. That's referring to which text mesh pro UGUI are we accessing? Next up, it needs the actual text that we want to set. So we could set this to hello. All right. So that is us creating our custom event to set our text. Later on, we're going to call this event, but let's just test it out for now with on start. So when we start the scene, let's call the same here function set text just to verify that it works. So I'm going to close this. You'll notice we start with a text of score, but if I hit play, that text should now change to hello. And look at that. It does indeed change to hello. That is a great sign. It means that my game is working as expected. Awesome. Okay. So we have hello being set. I'm going to stop the game. Then I'm going to go back into my score graph. So currently we just set hello, but what if instead we want to actually show the score? Well, for that, I'm going to create a new variable to store our player's score. The variable will be an application variable because these variables will be saved even if the scene reloads, because commonly in our visual scripting, we are reloading our scene. But if you reload a scene that will reset every variable, if it is a graph, an object or a scene variable. But if it's an app variable, the variable value will persist or it will be stored still, it will not be reset even if the scene reloads. It's only when the application quits that the app variables will be reset. So let's create a new variable that we will call score. Make sure it is under the app category. We're going to hit enter. The data type will be an integer because the score will go up by increments of whole numbers. The initial value of score will be zero, but don't be fooled. This can change throughout any script graph where you set score. Even if it says value zero, that doesn't mean it gets reset to zero. It only gets reset to zero when the application quits, when you stop the whole game. So we're going to use this score variable. You can click and drag the score onto the graph, or you can right click and get the variable score. So we're going to get the variable value of our score. So this is one option for how we can set our text. We can set it using a variable. Another option is to use an argument. So we can set the arguments of our custom event to one instead of zero. This means that when the event is called, it must take in one piece of data. So we're going to do it this way instead, where every time we call this event, we're going to pass it the current score instead of using the score application variable, just so that we get accustomed to using arguments. So I'm going to take in our integer argument and I'm going to pass it to set text. 
but if we want this to work, we do have to convert the integer to a string. So I'm going to drag this node off and convert it to a string. This is integer to string. Then we can set the string for the set text. Otherwise, the node will complain. On start, however, now we may get a problem where we don't know what the argument is. So if we try to close the graph and play the game again, let's see what happens this time. All right, yes, we do get an error that the value of argument zero cannot be fetched dynamically. It must be assigned. So the reason being that if you go to your score and edit your graph, when we start the game, we never have that argument. We only have that argument when we send the argument with the event. So if we want to call this function set text on start, we have to copy the node and do it separately. And then here for the start event, we can then use our app variable, our application variable which is the score variable. So I'm going to get the score variable. Then I'm going to convert it to a string. So integer to string. And I'm going to pass the result to set text. By default, this will be a value of zero. So we're just splitting off how the text is set. When the game begins, the text will be set with the variable. But any other time, the text will be set using the argument value, so we get practice with arguments. This is red now, but once you hit play, it will stop being red. So let's hit play, and we can see that indeed now we have zero being set as the text of that score object, and that's because we successfully changed our script graph. So we can go back to the graph, and we can see we split it off now. We have on start as a separate call to set text, which uses the variable, and we have the custom event argument, which is a separate set text node that uses the argument sent to the event instead. So we have practice using arguments. Coming up next, we're going to update the score so increase its value and then learn how we can actually use that custom event, how we can call it to update the text as the score updates. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.